Boom, right now, you're watching Storming Smoke Point with the one and only himself, Mr. Intergalactical, international, all over the world, boss it in the place. And today we have the one and only Mr. Lethal Bizzle. How you doing my brother? I'm cool bro, what's popping? Listen, the people have been asking crazy for you. Your name's been popping up every time I'm like, look, who can we get in next? Everybody wants Lethal no, Bizzle. No, Here he is. The main question that everyone's going to want to know is, how did you start? What made you get into this music? Boy, when did I start? We've got to go back years. We've got to go back to more Fire Crew. Um, boy, when we started the game, man, it was all about just having fun and just making tunes. and Not even making tunes, just being like, you know like when you're in the bedroom and you're the man that are playing like FIFA and PS4, a man will have decks, a man will just start spitting bars, writing bars just casually. Then we go on pirate radio, and then the pirate radio, we start building a fan base. Then we'll do like little underground raves, and then people come out to see us perform. So it was just very natural, organic, innit? It wasn't a thing where we said, oh, we want to do music and we want to we wanna bustle and travel the world. It was just a natural thing. Like some people play football, us, man, wrote bars and done little raves in the ends. Gotta big that up fully. Those who don't know, we're gonna go back years, years, years. Um, more fire crew, Jeez. nasty crew. I was Jeez. starting around the same time on yeah, Deja yeah. Vu. I yeah. still remember the first yeah. day that we bumped up with a man there. Um, how did you and Nico and Ozzy like get together? Like, it's, yeah. I know you're like, from the same sort of area, but yeah. how did it all come together? Um, boy, I went to school with Ozzy B, so I know Ozzy for time. And then um, Nico was from the ends as well. And then what happened was me and what well, all that shit. I don't know, the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know where that goes. But yeah, um, so yeah, me and Nico, Ozzy B, all from like East London, Leighton, Walthamstow, Chinkford. So Ozzy B, after we left school, was in more fight with Nico. And I was just doing my own thing with one of my DJs, and they were like, bruv, you might as well just link up and let's just do more fight, three of us, innit? So I was like, yeah, cool, why not? So we linked up, and then from there, we just started doing pirate radio, pirate radio underground raves, house raves, like just doing like underground shit. And then boy, next minute, man, we started going to the studio making songs and then Oi just happened in the studio. Like, I remember it like yesterday, one bedroom studio, we're just all sitting there. I thought of the idea, put it down. And then Ozzy and Nico were like, yeah, let's do our version. So they made their hook up, Oi, who's at O to the Z, who's at NWE. And then yeah, the next minute, the underground and that, the little shubses we was doing them times were just feeling it and then we got a record deal, like early 2001, I was like 16, and um, and then yeah, the next minute we're on top of the pops, singing Oi Who's That More Fire Crew, top 10. Like, but, but, but that's works, I even took the next question I was going to ask out of my mouth. So, he came in with the Oi, as you know, that video was like everywhere, I still remember it. I'm still pissed I wasn't even in it, I wanted oh, to go that day and play still. dominoes. You get me? I was in it as well, still. <laughs> you get me? No, that was a sick video. Um, from that, you obviously done the major thing in the Graham game. For me personally, you made a track that is going to last forever. It's never going to die. Pow. Mm. How did that come? What made you think of that? Like, that's an amazing, like, that is a big, massive thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like the Graham National Anthem. Definitely. Um, Pow. What happened with Pow is, like, after more fire crew now, um, like, things got a bit shaky in the scene, like, like, Police were shutting us down and like we couldn't really play anywhere. Like, you know, there's a lot of backlash of like incidents happening in the clubs and stuff. So I remember thinking to myself, like, rah, like, they're really trying to like lock us off. So there's a lot of a bit of a phase where people wanted to start making like R and B and hip hop and shit. And I just was like, nah, I don't really wanna do that. Like but our producers at the time were like, yeah, man, this, this garage grind thing, like, no one wants to play it or hear it. Like, we've got to switch it up. So I remember thinking, all right, you know what? Like, obviously, I'm in a crew, so I need to, like, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, like have input and do what the team want to do. So I, I said, all right, cool, like, we'll do that. But then I thought, I need to start my label and do the grind thing still, like, simultaneously. So I started Lethal Bizzle Records. I remember I just thought, you know what, I've got a few bags in the bank, let me just try and run a label. And the first idea I had was power, and I was like, you know, I want to do a song and get all the mandem on it. And then boom, let's just see what happens, because at that time, nothing was really going on. So called the mandem, went to the studio, 
we laid it down, we heard it, and I remember, funny enough, when I played the beat to them, no one was really rating the beat, everyone was a bit like, rah, like, what's this, and I was kind of like, like, yo, trust me, trust me, trust me, like, it's gonna pop, and then, um, yeah, like, two months after it got played, like, it was, like, one of the biggest songs in the country, then I done the video, and that just took it to the next level, and then it was, like, deja vu again, labels are calling, yo, 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 come and see us, Sign, blah blah blah. So like nine months after the song was out, I signed it to uh, Relentless. Um, they reshot the video, uh, made it a bit more glossy or whatever. I thought the first video was decent, but you know the label stayed. So um, and then yeah, it came out end of two thousand and four, and we ended up at number eleven. You know what I mean? Christmas week. So um, yeah, and you know just like twelve years later, it's still getting the same response it's getting now. So. Um, getting then shall I say so yeah it's one of them songs man I don't think it's ever gonna die you know like it's just gonna live for generations and generations you know um, and I'm, yeah man I'm proud of that record definitely you, you changed a lot I, I even heard Buster Rhymes spitting on it how about that yeah it was mad yeah. those bare <laughs> versions of Buster there was um, imagine Pitbull before he started doing this different kind of stuff um, who else was on there like Jay Z dropped it in one of his sets mm -hmm. when he was on tour like the record just it just went universal. Like Just Blaze, who's Jay Z's producer, made some of his classics. Was like that's his like his favorite UK record ever. He plays it all over the world, man, and we become good friends because of it. So it's one of them records, man. I just think internationally, everyone just understands the energy of it, man, and it just speaks to them and makes people wild up. Definitely all the way. Also, we're gonna talk about the clothing. I need to get myself some of this. Yeah, like, Stormin needs to dent chat, go to two drum and bass rave and a dent thing. You no, get me? No, How did that come about? That is another. You've just gone from one big extreme to another big yeah, extreme yeah, to yeah. another. You don't do nothing small, I'll give you that. Yeah, no, like, how did that come man. about? You know what? Dench was just a thing where, like, obviously, me and the man used to always just say Dench. Like, anything we thought that was sick, we'd be like, oh, that's Dench. So we just started saying it on social media. And me and my cousin at the time, he used to play for Arsenal, uh, Frimpong. He was saying it on his social media. So all the Arsenal fans were like, wow, what's this, what's this Dench thing? What's this Dench thing? Then the fans were like, yo, you should do Dench t-shirts. And we just thought, man, nah, man, this is a little thing we say. We're not going to do t-shirts. Next minute, the fans are doing their own t-shirts, getting copycats and getting Dench on a t-shirt. We're thinking, raw! Like, people really want this Dench stuff. So me and Frimpon was like, yo, let's just print up some t-shirts, innit? So I printed up, like, 500, thinking, yeah, yeah, that'll last, man, for, like, whatever. Bruv, I put it on um, Graham Daily at the time, big up Posty. They sold in, like... I think a couple of days, the poster was like, at first when he saw the design, he was like, bruv, these are not going to sell. It just says Dench, like, they're not going to sell. Next minute he's ringing me like, bro, like, we need more t-shirts, like, they're flying. So we thought, you know what, we might as well put like, money properly and then organise it properly and, you know, sell it and make it like a real nice t-shirt, get the logo and get like, the tags and packaging. And then next minute, Frimpong's called me and said, yo, I went training today. And Arsenal, um, the guy who works for like the superstore, said they want to stock it. I was thinking, what? It was, yeah. So I went to Arsenal, had a meeting. I done like a one year deal with them. They were like, yeah, we want to put it on the superstore, like the armory. So you put it in there for one season. Just went nuts after that. But then I started realizing it was becoming too Arsenal affiliated. So I thought, let me take it out of there so it could just be for everyone, innit? And then, um, and yeah, man, if you want to check it out, stadiums.com. We got a new launch, uh, new range dropping in, in the next couple of weeks, so yeah, man, it's still ticking over, man. Bruv, you gassed me up because the woman herself, James Bond, yeah, Miss Judy oh, Dench, yeah, yeah, yeah. was wearing the t-shirt and the hat with you, man. like that. Just shows that anything is possible, isn't it? Trust, like, trust. So, in other words, we can call you the grime entrepreneur, yeah. We can well, get one off, one off, definitely, yeah. One off, one off, it's showing you anything no, is possible. No, we're not on this thing here. We're yeah. gonna give you the grime entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I appreciate that. But I've got to be honest, there's a few man who, who's done it as well. I've got to be like man like Tinchy Stride yeah, as well. Yeah, of course. Got to be like Tinchy. He's done his, he's done his, he done his star and other thing as well. Mm -hmm. Got to be like man like Jeremy as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The BBK thing. You know, there's a few still, but yeah, man. You know what I mean? I definitely, I've always kind of had that kind of like business acumen, like where I thought, you know what? It's got to be more than just. Just the just what I'm doing. It's gotta be. I've gotta find out the, the the mechanicals of how it works. You know what I mean? And not just be a, a artist. Because I feel like that's what's made me sustain my, my longevity. Of understanding that, as well as you put a song out, like what's the what's the mechanicals of how you make it a hit record? And um, funny enough, I was speaking to someone a few weeks ago who used to do grime, and he was like, he's into marketing now, and he was like, now 
I see where he was he was getting wrong because he was like, I thought I'll do a video, put it out, and then it's gonna bust. And then um he was like, rah, then now I'm doing marketing, I clocked, you need to do this, you need there's so much different things you need to put into like the product to make it really connect. So and that's always been within me from earlier. I learned, to be fair, I had a head start with more fire crew, so I kind of knew that there was more things than just making a song. You could have a hit record, but if you don't do the right things, it may not necessarily be a hit. So, um, so yeah, man, I think I'm just I'm blessed with that. So I was gonna say because like when you think about it, every tune that you've more or less put out is more or less a banger, brother. Yeah, it's man. never been like just a one tune that's okay. Mm. It's always gone that bit further. Do you know what I mean? You've got the one with Temper T and Jamie, yeah, the yeah, pump pump. Right, right, you had my yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, Going around the house like pop pop, do you know what I mean? You've got uh, the wobble right now. Every yeah, girl, yeah. now watch every girl I wobble it, wobble it. You know what I mean? Like every tune has got something to it. Do you know what I mean? And I feel yeah. that a lot more artists need to be doing more of that. Do you know what I mean? Love, it's love. more than just minimum and MCs. Yeah, do you know no, what I mean? Definitely, man. You know what I mean? Obviously, like. Music makes you travel the world, man, and you see different things. And you know, even with the with Festa Skank as well, That's another one, one that was That's like, it. you know, just just took it to a next level, like another dimension. You know, it just brought so many different fans and people who never heard of me to the table. So, you know, it's just about you know, what I mean, being open minded. You know, obviously, grime is is what I love and where I started. But at the same time, you just got to experiment and you know, do what you do what you want to do, man. You know, what I mean, don't limit yourself, and that's exactly what I try to do, man. Straight up. So what do people got to look for from you next to come up? Boy, out? right now, so you can see I'm in the studio. <laughs> so, um, yeah, working on the album, fourth album. It's going to be a 2017 thing. Um, I'm trying to get that guy, Teddy Brockshot, on there. Like, he's doing big things. Doing a lot. There's a few Teddy. other people as well I'm trying to get on there. But, um, yeah, man, the album's looking like it's, it's going to be a banger, man. So just look out for that. Wait on that. There you go, people. There you have it. Hey, just real quickly said, fam. Do you ever feel bad about what you've done to end ups? Whoa, he took it up. <laughs> I just always wanted to know this. What, them man, what? Are, them man are bankrupt, <laughs> Faisal. You know what? They did it to themselves, though, really. Like, they did it to themselves, man. Like, I've explained the story so many times of what happened, you know, but um, it, it's, it's, it was one of them things where, like, what they did, like, was always going to catch up in them, innit? You can't. You can't move like that and feel like you're just gonna get away with it. And karma just really just fucked him in the ass properly. And I feel like um, now I'm done with it. Like I'm, I don't even care. But I had to do what I had to do because obviously I'm from a different era, in it from them. I'm from an era where we go radio, we spit bars. It's out there. You do a song with a man. Like I'm not from an era where you, you might send a tune and then someone's gonna take your idea and then use it for your own tune and then try par you and like man's not from that era in it so when they did that i was like i can't let this slide bro. like as much as i just wanted to like man would be like like leave it it's like nah bro like and on top of that you took the idea and then the idea bus and then at the time you're so hype they were abusing your power making mm -hmm. me look like i'm lying like i'm trying to get hype off you so there was so much things going on, I had to play chess. Like I even had to fall back while it was going on because I was like, all right, you know what? Like people are not hearing me right now because they're so hot and they're doing their thing. Let me just fall back in it and then just, you know what I mean? Just like a fox in a box. And then when it's time to go, then I'll go in it. So I had to just, you know what I mean? Just manoeuvre that. But they just played into my hands in it because like I said, they just kept fucking up. And anytime they fucked up, I was like, okay, cool. Like Let me just highlight that in it and, 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 and use that to my advantage. So. So yeah, no, I don't even do it. Like I said, I don't, I don't feel bad at all, but they did it to themselves, man. And I think it's a learning lesson for not just themselves, but to other artists of how not to be when you're in the spotlight, mm. bro. You know what I mean? Because they burnt so many bridges and they were going on like, they were so fucking like untouchable. Like people now think twice to fuck with them again. They'll be like, right, like you weren't, you weren't trying to fuck with certain people when you was doing your big arenas and your number one, mm. but. You know what I mean? You gotta be careful, man, because when you're coming back down, bro, you're gonna see them same people. So it's just one of them things, man. There you go, there you have it right there. Lethal Bizzle in the place to be, Storming Smoke Point. People, let me know who you want me to have in the hot seat next, sure. and we will deal with it. You know, just look down there somewhere, it's over there somewhere, yeah. Also, I wanna big up Grace Glass. We weren't allowed to smoke today, but he's here. Don't worry, Jeez. the next one, we're gonna get this out and go inside the ride, yeah? Mad nice. <laughs> So yeah, oh holla, there, let me know who you want me to speak to next. Big up Lethal Bizzle. Don't know, G. Bless, Respect. Bro.